page. Well, of course, for us, uh, physical punishment is a torture and bad treatment. So it's not uh, something we think should be, should happen in, at any occasion or anything. It shouldn't be there. So that's one point. The second point is that we think that somebody has the right to to to, to, to tell their opinion. So and uh, even if we don't like it, but in the case of Raif, I mean, he's talking about human rights. He's talking about the women's rights. He's talking about democracy. He's talking about the freedom of religion. So, I mean, he has a right to, to say it. And, uh, we think that uh, he should be free. It's Colette Lelièvre, campaigner at the French Canadian section of Canada. Thank you very much. I was wondering, uh, do you think the uh, awarding of the Sakharov Prize for Human Rights had uh, precipitated the resumption of the lashings? Uh, no, we have no reason to believe there's a connection between uh, Mr. Badawi rightfully being acknowledged in the way he has been by the European Parliament with uh, this year's Sakharov Human Rights Prize, uh, with the the increasing concern that there's a possibility of the floggings resuming. Uh, number one, that hasn't been confirmed. Uh, but number two, quite the opposite. We would think that this actually uh, increases the pressure on Saudi authorities not uh, to take further action against Mr. Badawi, that this strong it sends a very strong message that the world is concerned, um, that governments are concerned, uh, and that they need to do the right thing. And how is uh, Mr. Badawi's health? Uh, well, he continues to be uh, in difficult straits, obviously. Uh, having to endure this, even just mentally and psychologically, uh, is not easy. And, uh, and certainly we remain concerned that, uh, that this is really taking a toll on him. And is he getting a proper medical attention in jail? Um, um, we don't know the details of, of all the medical treatment he's receiving uh, and certainly continue to be of the view that he needs to receive full and proper middle care, medical care and that it should be independent uh, medical care. Uh, but really the main focus here is that he needs to be immediately and unconditionally released. That's what's required from a human rights perspective and that's what's required from a health perspective. What can individual citizens do to help? Uh, one of the things that's been so heartening over these past many months is the degree to which ordinary individuals, certainly in Quebec, across Canada and right around the world, have spoken out. Uh, they can check out uh, online petitions at amnesty.ca uh, in English and in French uh, here in Canada and, and elsewhere around the world. There's petition and letter writing opportunities and we need to keep up the pressure. Thank you very much. But uh, we must be freed and must be freed now. Uh, unfortunately, Saudi officials refuse to receive us, refuse to hear that. That does not mean that the message wasn't conveyed very, very strongly, of course. And we've now come here uh, to the Prime Minister's office because we have a second message uh, that must be conveyed and must be heard. Uh, one that we have been shouting out about across Quebec and across Canada for many months now, and that is that the Canadian government, at the very highest levels, at the level of our Prime Minister, must make right but I always case an absolute priority. There is such a strong Canadian connection to this case uh, because of the fact that NSAP Haidar and NSAP and Raif's children live here in Canada, have been received and given refuge in Canada. And it is so important that the Prime Minister of our land, therefore, do everything possible now to ensure that this family can be reunited. 